Hey and welcome back to the Infidel Space Program. This is episode 3. In the last episode we deployed our moon base stroke laboratory which was pretty cool apart from we did lose the landing legs on it through a, um, a build mishap by myself. Incompetent infidel you can say. But yeah that was quite funny. But they're down safe and they're um, conducting their experiments and growing various plants and food in their little greenhouse module they have. So today we're going to start constructing some next generation equipment. The Osiris ICV. Gone for a minimum bare bones as we can here. Because we're going to be docking quite a lot to this, so the part count is going to be quite high. But this is this is her. This is Osiris. Her. It's a he, really. No woman can be this beastie. This is a man ship. But yeah, look at that beastie engine. These two parts here, as you can see, we only need this to get us up into orbit. Two parts, which is great. The parts are um, Z Pinch Fusion. The description is in the, the description. The link's in the description. Awesome bit of kit. A little cheaty, I guess, because of the fuel consumption. And these are aero spike engines, so they shouldn't work in space. But obviously, this mod doesn't care about the law and everything else. It just does its own thing. But yeah, we've got a mass beasty kind of spiky engine at the bottom there. So yeah, it's pretty much basic. We've got B9 Aerospace Cockpit, which has an awesome in-vehicle view and detail inside, and the view outside is pretty nice. Four docking ports around this, this edge down here. This is where we'll be docking our habitat modules to either side to even it out. Uh, our miner and our space shuttle, well, our rocket, which will be going up and down to convert, yeah, to collect the caffeine from the miner and the truck <coughs> which we'll be sending down later see so this will have four pieces and I've got a spare docking port on top so we can like refuel this when we're up and things like that and just in case we need it for anything else uh, we've got a habitat module here which kind of doubles as a truss section like yeah, for our docking ports that's the door to get in, just under here. Uh, it's got two windows. I'm not sure if it's got IVA. I haven't looked at it really much detail. These four cylinder things, well, eight cylinders, these are RCS and they hold 500 each, so four of them should be plenty. And this is our nuclear reactor. We're going nuclear power with this because, well, we need it to last a long time. Basically, we are going to go colonize every planet with this one by one. Um, I'm going to build our modules so they can come back and dock again and then we can go to another planet we can use the caffeine to refuel everything when we mine it and this is a converter up here, the green thing uh, it's a pretty simple design just got SAS there so I've got two sets of thrusters at the bottom to start because this is the heaviest part but once we add more units I'm going to need some RCS up top so I've put four on already that's pretty much it guys, so yeah I didn't want too many parts on it because yeah when we build up if you play the game you know it starts to lag we've also got the chatterer obviously so you know they can communicate and I've got a little protractor stuck at the top there if you can see it it's got a bit of sellotape, space tape on it to hold it on very Kerbal, there it is and that's our radio which looks a bit worse for wear so that's it, I'll see you on the launch pad, I'm going to speed up the launch. I haven't tested this actually to see if it will get us up there, but I have used it before. And I think I've launched heavier things with it with just one fuel tank. So we'll see. So I'll probably see you when we're up in space. Alright guys, just before we launch I forgot the ICV stands for Interplanetary Colonization Vessel. Which is what this is. You can see the moon up there. That's where our guys, Jim and is it Ludvi? I can't remember. It's Ludzi and Jim. They're up there, looking down. Probably using their telescope. Uh, yeah, their laser cam telescope. 
anticipating this launch. Hopefully no one dies. We haven't had a death yet. Funny enough, we've only sent two up. So we haven't had to use our burial service just yet. Without much further ado, we're going to launch Adnand and Jeffna. They're going up. So see you soon. Okay guys, that's us up into a around 120km orbit. We are 4km out either side, but I'm not too bothered about that, because... Oops, sorry. Hey, <laughs> so yeah, we're, we're up in orbit, it doesn't matter about our... Turning them off for now. <laughs> they annoyed me last video too. But yeah. Um, so yeah, we're up in orbit. Around 120 kilometers. It doesn't actually matter, to be fair, because we're going. I want to be quite close, though, because we can get a better effect for when we do go elsewhere. I've got protractor on here. I'll explain that when we come to use it. No need to explain it now. But this helps to get encounters. <laughs> I've gone to Juna enough and even jewel enough to get encounters for quite easy. I haven't even been to Elu yet, but Joe, you know we might go there first. That'd be interesting, I guess, because I've never been there, never landed on there, so I'm not sure how how that will go. But yeah, we don't need to know that yet, so I won't bother with that. Uh, so yeah, that's us up. That's all we've got really. I'll just go for a um. Still got some fuel. See, we only need this one tank to get up, and we've still got like a, just over a quarter left. Um, RCS, yeah, we've used like just almost a hundred. Had to use it though to stabilise a bit. I could even out the orbit, but there's just no point because we're not staying here that long. Uh, the generator should be active yet, so we'll never lose power got our converter so you can activate the converters to but obviously you need a caffeine source attached which we don't have yet so if I oh wrong one let's rotate and face the planet oh wrong way yeah it's quite bulky and hard to um, steer with the RCS, which is going to be a little bit of a problem when we go into planets, but I'm sure I can deal with it. Let's go ahead and have a look. There she is, guys. Look at that view. That's why I like this cockpit and this pod. You get really nice views like that. If I can slowly tilt, we'll face it fully. That's a nice view, isn't it? This is their first time in space. Do you think they'd be scared or feel safe looking down, thinking, will we ever get back? And the truth is, I don't know if these guys are ever going to make it back.
So there we go, look at that. That is nice. And we have got the other guy as well. Oh, that's the same one. At the back here. He's um co pilot. He's in charge of some important stuff too. You can actually control from either of these guys. But yeah, you can see the back of his head there. <laughs> shaking his head. I think he's scared, I'm not sure. Yeah, they're both scared. So I'm going to do one thing now. We're going to point north to south. So we're nicely orientated for when we want to come and dock. Should hold its position here if we leave it in that position. There's another trick as well. Instead of wasting our test to stop, just speed up time and let you see it freezes you. So let's just get on there and then speed up time and then stop and hit the T and we don't want RCS to burn so we shouldn't even need that one anymore we should just stay there so that's it for this episode let's get a nice little view one for the book there's the moon wonder how Jim and Ladsy are doing if they've grown anything nice so yeah, and look at that, smooth as a baby, it's bottom. That's what my old DT teacher used to say when we were, I can't remember, filing, filing our wood down. You want to get it as smooth as a baby's bottom. But yeah, I think he was just a bit, a bit weirdo. Alright, so that's it guys, and next we'll be sending up the, we'll do the habitation modules first. Because we've already kind of got a blueprint and base for it, but on the moon. But I want to use as minimum parts as possible, like I said, because this will build up with a lot of parts. And I want it as smooth as possible. But this is really nice and smooth. Quite chuffed with that. So, mods are in the description. This actual nuclear reactor is part of Deep, uh, deep Space Mission pack. Which has got some other cool bits, but... I literally really only use it for this. Uh, these RCS, I think they are part of the Deep Space Mission Pack 2 actually. So there's two parts from it. The Actually let's go in quickly while we're here. Which side is the hatch? Oh I didn't block it off did I on top? I'm not sure where the hatch is so let's have a look. Oh, that's the, uh, is that the pilot there? <laughs> Let's have a look. I oh, know, he's the pilot, isn't he? Yeah, pilot's safe. So we're going to just put him in the habitation module, just to check everything's working inside there. I believe the door, ah, oh, it's right on the bottom down here. Let's put your lights on. Yeah, it's going to be a bit awkward to get in. I didn't block it off, did I? No, there it is. Well, this is weird. <laughs> uh, up. There we go. And stop. Stop. And go for it. Creeping. That's it, boy. Board. Oh, look at that view. Weird. Oh, well, no, no, no. <laughs> I always do that. I hold shift for some reason when I'm moving the mouse around because I'm used to it in the VAB. Did we mess up? No, we can't really mess the orbit up anyway. Oh, it's actually brought us a bit closer. Alright. Yeah, it doesn't have IVA, unfortunately. No. So he's just chilling in there. We'll leave him in there for now. Shame, he's got a window. A bit pointless, not having IVA in it. So yeah, he's... Yeah, he's in there. That can hold six, that's cool. So yeah, we'll be sending up more Kerbals. I'll get him out later, but he's just chilling. So that's it, guys. Finally saying goodbye now. And join us next time when we 
put the two habitat modules on. Bye.